G'day Matt here, I'm mucking around today with the Redneck Resort shed, the inverters in it, so the solar um, set up. Uh, I had a bit of a annoying week with inverters blowing up and things like that, which happens. So it's the downfall of a green energy is the constant breakages and you know having to muck around with them, checking everything, making sure it's all working. It's not the set and forget system, that's for sure. The normal grid tied ones on your house, they're pretty close to set and forget because there's no batteries involved. So batteries just throw the whole thing upside down, make it more complicated, <clears throat> more things to go wrong. So today I'm just going to show you a couple of inverters that I'm running in the shed. A few of the ones, they're not dead, but they got errors like broken fans and stuff like that. They've been running for a few years. Um, and I'll just sh show you something that um, is kind of interesting about solar. It's always a balancing act, like you need to balance everything. So, um, you know, with that said, uh, we'll have a quick look at a few inverters. All right, so I'll just spin that baby around. Now, this one here is a new one I got just this week. So I've just finished putting this in. I didn't bother doing a video of putting it in because uh, I've done them before, but unfortunately I lost most of my videos with the computer hard drive crash recently. So that's slightly annoying, so I probably should have filmed putting it in, but it's pretty boring, and it's pretty straightforward. You read the manual, you know, the AC goes here, the, you know, you're sticking your panels in and sending it to all the different plugs and stuff that you want it to go to. So anyway, we've got this little baby over here. These are probably about three to four years old. Um, reasonably sort of low power. Uh, it can't handle m many panels, so say I ran four 250 watt panels off this one uh, and that's all it can really take because you've got 1200 watts like these aren't precise figures but these are roughly what I remember 1200 watts is the max panels it can take so I could only run four 250s without throwing it off um, I think it's 40 amp is all it can handle when most of my panels are like nine amps each so again I was limited to four again um, and with the inconsistency and efficiency of my panels and where they're placed, even though there's a thousand watts of panels coming into this thing, uh, you know, you'd be lucky on a summer's day to get 750, 800 watts coming out of it. So a little bit underpowered. It's only three kilowatts. So if you had two kettles going, it'll blow up. Well, not blow up, but it'll stop. Um, so very, very underpowered. But, you know, this is just a shed. It hasn't got to do a great deal. <clears throat> then we got this one here, which I'll show you what I just replaced it with. All right, sorry for the camera work. So this grow watt here, <clears throat> it's um, another off-gridder. Just kind of go around it as much as this camera is going to let me. Ah, it's terrible using these little gimbal cameras. So you can kind of see. So it's it's pretty small. You know, it's um, about the same size as these ones. You know, roughly, roughly, a little bit bigger. But I had this grow what turn up, um, and you know, she was pretty annoying. It's um, it had an error, so it's um. You know, it had an issue. I'll just edit all that out. Um, yeah, so I had this turn up about a week ago. Um, it was going to replace my cheap crappy one that could only take 1200 watts um, max. So this one's a little bit higher than that, but we had a big problem. It was um, constantly, if the sun goes behind a cloud, this thing just stops producing solar. So it would cut off the solar panels, um, and that's not a good thing. That's really quite annoying. So Every hour or two, if there was a cloud, this thing was shutting down. So brand new. Um, so I think it had a major issue. You know, I've, I've worked with the supplier to see if we could sort it out, but we couldn't. I rearranged the panels to series, then I made them parallel, then I did parallel slash series, and none of these things made any difference. When normally I thought maybe I was going over amps or something like that. So, you know, that's what it could have been, maybe. So, but at the end of the day, um, this grow watt's about $900. Um, you know, which is, it's, so i just get this camera over with here. Um, these ones here, these cheap little Chinese jobs, they're very out of power, but you know, if you only got a few small loads to do, you know, generally in the shed, it's about 400 watts all day, running a few freezers, fridges and whatever that's in here. So this was about 300, 320 when I brought it. They're probably 350 now, roughly, um, as everything never comes down in price. It's always going up. So, you know, cheap enough to muck around with. So not not a bad buy they've lasted a few years my only problem is one of the fans in it which are like computer fans has died 
Um, but it still works, so who cares? You know, it's got two fans, it can run on the other one. It never was charging much of a load anyway. Like, it's not really, you know, producing anything more than, you know, maybe two kilowatts might go out of it occasionally, but that'd be quite rare. Um, some of my tools might, you know, drills and saws and stuff might push it for two and a half out of its three kilowatts, but it handled it, it, it and it wasn't fussy. I actually overloaded this one um, and I gave it, uh, the 40 amp was the minimum and like for a stage, I had a few extra panels plugged into it um, and um, I did parallel series because it kind of drops the amps and the watts down together, which is what I needed. So 350, 800 for the new one and for the grow watt is about 900. Um, so the grow watt's going back. I'm packing this one away today because it's faulty. But also, <coughs> just um, after playing with it and having this thing live for a little while, that'll just give you a bit of an idea of size. So not very big, you know, a bit bigger than the other two. Um, you know, after playing with it for a couple of days, I found it had a horrible noise, like it whines. So the whole time, it's got this absolutely horrible noise and you can hear it quite far away. Um, you know, I could be inside and I can hear this and it's not just the fans. The fans are extremely noisy in this thing, like way too noisy for my liking. Even though it's in a shed, I, I just hate walking near it. It's, fans are blaring and it's not even doing much. Um, so it's literally wasting its own power, buzzing fans all day. So the fans are out of control, but it has a very horrible high pitched electronic noise coming out of it. Uh, and when I mean annoying, I'm talking really annoying. Like you can hear a bit of background whir from this one at the moment. That one is actually amazingly quiet. It's the quietest inverter I've probably got. Um, new, haven't really overplayed with it, but you know, that's another story. But this Grow Watt, um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I was really upset with it. So it's a 20, <coughs> 24 volt, so 24 volt battery setup. Um, all these ones in my shed are 24 volts. My big systems on the house are 48s. Um, but these ones are just 24. So your voltage range is 30 to 80, maximum 80 volts. So that's pretty bad. Like that's really quite low. Um, so for an example, if I go over here for a sec, if I can get this on camera and steady enough, it's probably a bit hard to read. So they're 206 watts and they're 38 volts. So call that 40 volts per panel coming out at 9 amps. Alright, so remembering roughly what we were doing, this um, looking at the um, volts coming in from a panel, as I just showed then, one panel, one of my panels, is close to 40 volts. So what do we got here? Maximum 80. So that's two panels. That's like 500 watts of panels. That's absolutely pathetic. Again, you can wire in different, you know, series, parallel, so you could turn the amps up, for example, to get rid of the volts. So to to have the issue where you want four panels minimum running at say 250 watts, um, you're gonna have to change how you wire your panels together for it. Um, so maximum current charge is 50 amps, which is half that one up there and half my other ones. So that's quite low. Um, and maximum charge current's 30 amps. So again, very low. Um, rated power is 3,000 watts, so most of these kind of units you'll see around about 3,500. This one's 3,000, so another 500 less, which means if I'm running a kettle and someone, or a tool, like a 2,400 watt drill or whatever saw, and someone turns on a kettle or something, this thing will just shut down. So I, I also don't like 3,000 watt inverters, like 3.5 is minimum, most of mine are 5, and even if you got 5s, you want to link them together put them in parallel and, and have 10 kilowatt inverters or buy 10 kilowatt if you're trying to run a house. But again, this is just a shed, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so overall, those stats are pretty bad, pretty low. Like, you know, you have to muck around wiring your panels up the right way and you're still only gonna get like four 250 watts. And like I mentioned, this one had a major problem. So it was just shutting down constantly all the time. Just, you know, as far as I can see, for no reason apart from a bit of cloud coming through. One of the advantages of these grow watts is they have USB dongles. So the USB dongle's pretty good. It um, you know sends info into my computer over the Wi-Fi. I can be on holidays and I could shut the inverters down, turn them on if there was a problem. So that's pretty good. So remotely they're about $65 um, and yeah, about 900. Now I, 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 I'm on eBay, I live on that bloody place and I don't really want to, but eBay has eBay Plus. I think I pay five bucks a month. So because of the eBay Plus deal, I got this one for, 750 was like nearly $200 off. 
close to 180 or something like that. Uh, and this was like $10 off. So um, with discounts, I paid, you know, 780 something like that. But at the end of the day, the noise, the fan noise, it didn't work. It's underpowered. So I'd classify this as junk. And, in, and $900 isn't a lot for an inverter, but I'd, I'd still classify this as expensive junk. Um, they're all Chinese made, so that's half the junk reason. Uh, you know, if you want anything good, anything Australian, German or whatever, you're paying quadruple any of these prices, like easily quadruple. And a lot of them aren't all in one hybrids. You've got to buy all different charge controllers separately or whatever. It gets a little bit more confusing um, and it just adds up. So yeah, sure, you can buy quality gear, probably last 10 years, 20 years maybe, who knows. But, you know, they, they're all got fans and stuff like that in them, which always fail. So um, I filled some of my bigger inverters with computer fans because these fail you can't get parts from china won't honor parts you know they just don't care they just want you to buy a new one so anyway this grow what 3000 watt inverter um it's pretty much a piece of crap i'm, I'm not impressed by it even if it, even if it didn't have a, a fault um i'm still far from impressed by it i have other grow watts five kilowatt grow watts uh, and they are just all over this thing like, so much better so underpowered too expensive, way too noisy, horrible high-pitched, whistly electronic noise coming out of it, like a frequency, which just does your head in. Like, I couldn't imagine I didn't like it. All my pets would absolutely hate it. You know, they just, they wouldn't deal with this thing at all being on. And the pets are often in the shed on their beds and dogs and cats running around out here. So I couldn't imagine what it sounded like to them. So I'll just quickly now show you the one I got. So you can kind of see it's got a a pretty flash LED screen compared to most of them but I don't really care about LED screens to tell you the truth like who cares uh, it's just some basic information there so uh, not something I really need to worry about is how sexy it looks but quite a small inverter so you can see my hand there it's only half of my hand width and hand spanning it's only two hands tall and it's quite narrow so very very small little unit um, but it's got a lot a lot better stats so with this one, we're looking at um, like the rated power is four and a half thousand watt. So just under the five, so that's good. That's um, not bad. It's the 24 volt battery, um, handling up to 190 amps, which is massive. Um, it's your standard, you know, up to 240 volt output um, for AC. It's rated for 6,000 watts of panels. So that's a, that's a nice little chunk of panels. You know, that, that's not bad at all if you consider you know what what it can do so in, in my 250s like you know so it's it's that kind of thing it's like you know six falls of 24 so this could take 24 250 watt panels that's pretty good the maximum charge current current um is 150 amps so that's up that's you know a lot of them are a lot less than that like the one i showed you over there is 50 the one next to it um the and the more impressive part of this is um the max solar voltage so mm MPPT voltage range and the max solar voltage it can handle like I showed you on that panel that every panel I've got are about 40 so we're talking 40 volts per panel so you know having 450 to play with compared to that one at like <laughs> near nothing like it's it's ridiculous it's 102 and this silly grow watt that I just showed you is also 102 so this one on the wall this gray thing that I've just gotten I've never had this company before or whatever it's four times more panels can be hooked up to it, or four times more ampage. It's actually more than four times. So, you know, straight up, just slapping panels any way you want them, really, with this one. You don't have to worry about the amps, and you don't have to worry about, um, you know, voltages. It's, it's, it's not unlimited, but this is replacing one of these garbage ones, which I then replaced with the other grow watt, which didn't work. So anyway, um, I had a problem with the company, though. So I, I got a really good deal out of this one. I hate the touch screen touch buttons it's junk junk and that's what I had a problem with but um, I got a really good deal on this because um, they didn't have I brought a different one from this company and they didn't have any in stock um, so what they did was they did a bit of a deal uh, where um, I asked them um, for the you know for a particular model which was cheaper than this one it was only about five hundred six hundred dollars and they didn't have any in stock um, so at the end of the day I just said to them well you know, uh, I want this one, and they, they said they had 13 in stock, and they gave me some baloney story. I think they were just trying to upsell some other inverter, um, or maybe they just didn't have any. I don't know. 
But um, so this thing was an upgrade and it was about $300 more. So this is like $800 inverter. But due to the specials, this Grow Watt thing, we're talking five or $600, you know, is what I actually paid for it in the end. So this was a couple hundred bucks more. And with a bit of a fight over them mucking me around and whatever, um, they ended up saying they would honour this one for the price of what I paid for, which is, you know, a really good deal. But I didn't trust them. I, I really didn't think they were going to send me one because uh, too good to be true, you know. This is, and, and I'm not picking on China all day long, you know. They make most of our shit and um, that's just how it is. But, um, you know, having having this, getting a deal off China is not that easy, especially when, you know, they've probably lost money on this, I guess. So I was very nervous. They did some dodgy thing where they sent me a heap of, I don't have them right next to me, but just like parts for wiring up panels, like they're like joiners. They sent me a packet of joiners instead of sending me the inverter. So that'll tell eBay that they've sent something. So as soon as they did that, I got really angry and I said, no, um, you're being dodgy. You're just trying to send me some crap. And then it'll look like eBay for eBay's end. It'll look like they sent me something because it was a tracked package. Yet it was just these like four panel connectors. You put four solar panels into one connector and I don't need them anyway, like they're junk. So, you know, I just didn't want them, not something I was after. So I got really angry at them and warned them that this thing better turn up and gave them a bit of shit, you know, had a bit of a fight, which is normal with China. Um, if you want service, you got to fight. They don't know, they don't know how to service you. They just make the junk. So anyway, um, after a bit of a fight, they did send it and they sent it from China. There was none, none in Australian stock. And when they sent it, um, I got a tracking for it. It turned up a day after the other package, the fake package, which they never answered why they did that. And I was pretty sure I knew why. And then typically I install it, it lit up, it did all the stuff it should be doing, but the buttons didn't work. So I couldn't program it. So I've, I've got a lithium battery on, on this one. Um, and it was set to AGM and all the settings are wrong. Factory settings are terrible. I don't know why they, the factory setting on every inverter is pretty much useless. You can't plug them in and use them. You've got to muck around, do all your settings, tune it into your battery and your panels and all that kind of junk. Well, this one, the enter button was, was working and the escape was working, but I couldn't program it. So then I got in a fight with China, which is still ongoing. They haven't done anything about it. They just said they'll tell the manufacturer and like, that's not much good to me. So they've kind of pretty much flogged me off and ignoring me now, which is probably fair enough. I'm a bit of an asshole when I'm dealing with people who are pissing me off. But anyway, um, I opened it up. It had a little, you know, warranty sticker on the top. I don't give a shit. Like I was so annoyed that day. I just pulled it open and I knew what it'd be. It'd be the ribbon. So there's like little computer ribbons where you've got six wires together, that kind of thing. Um, you know, for electronics or whatever. So I opened it up and the the actual cable had been twisted like twice over. So when they put it together, they spun this lid because this, this glass panel comes out, that's the front face. You undo two screws here, the whole front will come off, which is <laughs> pretty pretty ordinary. Two tiny little screws holding this big glass heavy panel. And um, I just spun it around, put it back in and lo and behold, I have up and down beeping working buttons so I could program it and I was really happy. But I'm, I'm, I even wrote to them when this was being sent and said, do not send me some secondhand broken junk and what turned up. It didn't have all the nice plastic on it. Normally there'll be a lot of film on these things. It had a bit of like glad wrap over the front pretending it had that peel off plastic. So it didn't have the peel off plastic. It looked unused. You know, it might have been tested by someone once. But I reckon they sent me, deliberately sent me something like another return. Um, you know, so luckily I'm handy enough to be able to not worry and I pulled it apart and fixed it. They don't even know that yet. I haven't even, I'm waiting for them to answer my question. So again, be wary with China. If you want to do it anything easy, buy anything in Australia, pay more money for it and get some service off a shop. You know, if, if you're not good at fixing things, that's how you do solely. You don't buy from China. You're just in for a world of pain. All they'll do is rip you off, send you junk, and their inverters are just, there's no parts, no servicing. Most most other inverters you can get servicing parts for them and fans, simple things. Now, what I also like about this one, it's called PowMR. So it's P-O-W, capital M-R. There's a seller on eBay that's called that. It doesn't mean they're the company, but so the company is P-O-W, capital M-R. Um, and they sell a fair 